So the question is now, so why does it make sense to define our causal signals like this? So just to write it down here again. So our causal signals, so they evolve like that and it's always zero in this direction here. So that's t, h of t. So why why does it make sense? Why does it make sense to define the causal signals like this? And the reason why this why this makes sense is if we're looking at the convolution operation. Because because of the convolution operation of the convolution operation here. So remember the convolution operation is defined like this here. So we are running integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, which is very dangerous in causal, in causal systems. And t minus tau, for example, and then x of tau d tau. So now we need to look into the convolution here and why this is important in our case here. So as we now from analog circuit design, so if we have a signal x of t and we send this signal into our filter function. So for example, in this case, let's say that's a high pass filter. And then we are getting an output y of t here. And then we now, if this is the impulse response of this filter here, so h of t is the impulse response. then the output y of t is calculated exactly with this formula here, so with this convolution operation. So this filter here, this box, performs a convolution operation. So, so filtering is equivalent to convolution. This is essentially also what we want to do in DSP so that we have a at the end a convolution operation. So now we need to see if the convolution of these causal signals actually gives us again a causal signal and um, how the system reacts to this. So let's now execute this convolution with a simple example. So let's write down the convolution again here. So y of t minus infinity to plus infinity. So h of t minus tau and x of tau d tau. So remember our definition of causality was that our system is basically excited here at this point. Yeah, so if this is here t and this is here our our response, yeah, so y of t for example, so the excitation is here, so if you have a high pass filter response it might look like that. And again, there's nothing happening before, so this is here zero. So in this case we have got our input signal here, x of t, and we send this in our box h of t and getting our y of t out there. So in mathematical terms this is y of t equals to x of t convolved it's not a very nice star, convolved with h of t. So let's have a look just at the graphical representation. So um, have done, let's take an example here. So that's our h of t. And this is here our x of t. 
here and let's say our h of t looks like that and our x of t looks like that here. So now how does it look like for different time steps or for different moments in time? So we, we, are, just, we are still in continuous um, we are still in continuous time so therefore it will be just evolving. So so how does it look like for t equals zero? So if we have a look here at this function here, so remember per definition, this h of t here is zero for negative time. This one is also zero for negative time. Yeah. So so in this case here, so we are just multiplying h of zero multiplied by x of zero. So if we have got these two example functions here, then this gives us zero. So the integration in negative time here will just keep this zero and the integration in positive time also gives us just this point here. Yeah, so for so for t equals zero this just gives us this point here in this line, in this case, just zero here. So now let's think of t equals just one second. Yeah, so then in this case here, then we have a slice here. So we are we are basically here with our t variable as at one second and we are also here at one second. So the so the integration here, the h of t is running in negative time. So we are here running this way. So that's our integration. And um, for this one here, it's running in positive time. So in this time, in this case here, the integration runs from here up to there. Yeah, so that's again one second. So for t equals one second, what we're getting is this surface is multiplied, this area is multiplied point by point with this area here. Yeah, so at this point here, we have an integral here where these points running in positive time and these points in negative time. So this means our output of the convolution here will start with zero, has um, zero readings for negative time, and will slowly evolve by creating more and more, more and more overlaps here. So this means that our resulting signal, what we are getting out here, so our y of t, is definitely zero before that because of the definition. So it's definitely zero before that because of our definition of our input signals here. So it's still zero. And the resulting function here might look like this or so. It is composed out of a growing, also out of these growing integrals from these two input functions here. Yeah, so the x of t and the h of t, where the x of t here, um, how does it look like? Like this one here, just like this with its wiggles and the h of t like a hump. And then at every moment in time of the integration tau here, then the um, integration of h runs backwards in time, whereas integration of x of t runs forward in time. And then this surface here is calculated and then generates us this point here, for example. And then for for a time step, do this here again. So if we have um, Again, our x of t here and our h of t here. Let's try this reproduce again so that we have these humps here. And so imagine now we are we are somewhere here. Then the integration still runs now 
in this direction, but now we are taking this surface here and we are taking that surface here by integrating this way. And then the result out of this feeds somewhere here and generates us this point here. And so that's the general idea of the convolution. It's um, quite hard to imagine, but the idea is that the system, the output, the y of t, is um, causal again. And um, reacts on the input x of t with the impulse response h of t. Let's talk about a bit more about convolution. Convolution. Because such an important concept. And let's do a test. So again, remember we've got our filter function here. So let's draw a low pass filter again in this here. So now we know that this h of t here is our impulse response. So this means if we are sending in a delta pulse as x of t here, then hopefully our output should be actually the impulse response. So in other words, if we think of this as a graphical representation, then if our x of t is just a pulse, yeah, so just like a delta pulse here, and this is here t, and our h of n might look like this here, then then our x of t should be identical to that. Yeah, so we should get the same out here again. So is this actually true? So if we write our convolution here, there's a y, not a g, y of t, equals 2, and then we've got our minus infinity to plus infinity here, and we've got the h of t minus tau, and then this is here x of tau, d tau. So now, if we replace this x of tau here with the delta of tau, then so if we have here delta of tau here, and we see instantly here that this gives us just h of t here out there. Yeah, so, so therefore this works. Let's just summarize the convolution. So summary convolution. Yeah, so our convolution operation is y of t, just the standard one. Yeah, so if you've got y of t minus tau and then x of tau d tau. So if these two signals here are causal signals, then the output here, y of t, is also causal. And causal signals, remember, means that the function is zero for t smaller than zero. Yeah, so the convolution operation is nothing else than the filtering operation. 
Yeah, so x of t is sent into a black box and generates our y of t. And there's our h of t here. And the h of t here, this is our impulse response. Impulse response of the filter.